to that powerful locomotive that came through here last night. Amen. With what I have felt on my heart to bring to you and to preach to you. Open up your Bible. Amen. It's not going to be a sword drill, but I do have three different verses in the Old Testament sort of grouped together, not too far apart. The first one in Judges chapter number 20. They have a common theme that I want to endeavor to convey to you here tonight. I have a, or today I have a very important task God has asked me to accomplish. And I hope and pray that I can do my very best for it. Judges chapter number 20. And one verse there, and then we'll move on to 1 Samuel. One verse there, and then a final verse out of 1 Chronicles chapter number 12. First of all, Judges chapter 20, verse number 11. said, So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. Would you say that with me together? Knit together as one man. First Samuel, if you'll turn over to First Samuel chapter number 18, is the next verse with similar wording that is inside of it. 1 Samuel chapter number 18, it said, and it came to pass, and he'd made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, the last verse that going to read to you first chronicles chapter 12 and verse number 17 and david went out to meet them and answered and said unto them if ye be come peaceably unto me to help me mine heart shall be knit unto you but if ye be come to betray me to mine enemies Seeing there is no wrong in mine hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. I just simply want to preach to you here today, to you young people, about hearts knit together. Hearts knit together. Amen. Would you lift your voice and ask God, one more time to speak to you. God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, in your mighty name, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I cannot do it without you, God. I need your powerful anointing, God. I need the touch of your wonderful spirit. Oh, God, come, come, come. Come and move, Lord. Come and move, God. Come and move, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. As I read my text to you here today, I am sure that there are more than one in the audience that thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk to young people from these verses about their hearts getting knit together with their pastor. And while that is a very, very important connection that all apostolic young people have to make, that is not going to be my subject here today. But I am going to endeavor to talk to you about the connection with your own youth group, the connection with your fellow 
young people. That is a connection where many, many, many young people feel like I'm just snug as a bug in a rug with my pastor and everything's fine, but I can't stand the other young people that are part of my youth group. I don't really have much good camaraderie and none of them are really close to me. And well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that the days of the Lone Ranger ended when you came into the kingdom of God. The day you repented of your sins, the day you took on his name in baptism, amen. That kind of mentality has a way of trying to slip into all of us. It was the great prophet Elijah that wanted to bemoan, I, even I alone, and the only one in this youth group that really wants to live for God. I, even I alone, am the only one that has not bowed my knee unto Baal. And God spoke back to him and said, Bubba, get over it. I've got 4,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Get off of your pharisaical kick and believe in that you're some kind of spiritual giant that nobody else can live up to the level in which you're living. Matter of fact, God works in this exponential math formula that said one can put a thousand to flight, but two, amen. Why in the world would you go out into battle all alone when two can put ten thousand to flight. Amen. God saying, if I can only start getting your hearts knit together with one another, there is absolutely no telling what can be done for the work of the kingdom of God. I've preached to you young people this morning that teamwork is God's only plan for battle in the end time. God has no other plan. Amen. He wants the young people to learn about the knitting process. Now, I was grown up in a household that had four sisters. And so I'm the first to admit to you that the subject of knitting something is not something that as a kid I considered to be gender neutral. I just always thought that was the work of grandma and them old aunts that dip snuff and all of the spit and whittle club that wanted to sit around and do all of that stuff, but forget all of that. But every time that I read to you here in the scripture today, the knitting together that's going on is among men. And so God is in this process for all of us, uh, helping us to know that This slow process involving the knitting needles and involving the yarn and and putting things back together. Matter of fact, I know there's just a few places here in the Old Testament where you can read similar to these three verses, but the the Hebrew word for knit uh, is not always translated knit. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, where it plainly, plainly refers to something that all of us, male and female, need to do. Listen to it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. 
Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind. It's the exact word for knit. No change whatsoever. Thou shalt bind. The Bible said, them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So the Almighty God, even when it comes to the basic doctrine of the Scripture, of the Word of God, said the process of getting it to stick is not super glue. The process of getting things to stick, even with your children, is not two-part epoxy or real good duct tape if you live down in the South. Amen. Or the hot glue gun or something else to get things to stick. God said the process of getting it in the heart of your children uh, is you've got to knit it, uh, amen, one strand of yarn at a time uh, and then go back and knit another layer and another layer and another layer. Uh, Oh, hallelujah. They won't end up in a charismatic church uh, believing in a trinity, confused about baptism, uh, And how it's supposed to be done. Uh, Amen. If mom and dad will do their job uh, of knitting the doctrine uh, down in the heart of the child. uh, Every day we're going to talk about it again. Uh, Every day we're going to put a little more on it. Uh, We're going to get this attachment uh, that the world can't break loose. uh, That all the philosophies uh, cannot destroy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Matter of fact, Rahab's scarlet cord, amen. There wasn't one worry in the mind of them spies that this cord has got a weakness in it that might not stand the shaking when the walls are fixing to come tumbling down. But they pulled out of their little duffel bag that scarlet cord and they said, Woman, listen to us. Listen to us. Your job is to get all your family members inside of this house if you want them to be saved. The only way that they're going to be saved, amen, is if you will knit No, it uses the word bind, but it's the exact same word. If you will knit this cord to the window of your house. If there's ever a weak connection, it won't be with the scarlet cord. It'll be because you didn't take enough time to put enough labor into it. I can just see that little harlot, uh, amen, going back every morning uh, and saying, what are you doing? Uh, I'm knitting it a little tighter because I don't know what's going to happen. They're out there with their trumpets today, uh, and it looks like these walls might come tumbling down, uh, and i got to make sure that my connection to the scarlet cord is strong enough, uh, is powerful enough uh, that when all the shaking uh, starts uh, happening, uh, I'm not sweating, I'm not worried, uh, I got it, uh, everything else can come down, uh, but you're not shaking me loose uh, from what I have bound uh, and knit uh, to the window. Oh, my God, young people, get it knit to the window of your soul. 
get it knit layer by layer, making up your mind. There's no professor at college that's ever going to shake it loose. Amen. There's no spirit of my generation that's ever going to shake it loose. I am bound to God's plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. But there's three crucial areas. It's the reason why I read three different texts here today. Three very crucial areas that we need our hearts knit together in. And the first one is found in the area we need our hearts knit together in is making true friends. David was at Ziglag. Life hadn't really, really been treating him too hot. He had learned that not everybody who says they're a friend are really a friend. He had learned what betrayal was all about. He had learned that those that he had trustingly allowed to be a part were often had ulterior motives and other agendas. And their hearts were set on other things. And here he was at Ziglag. And the scripture tells us before that chapter was over, amen, that one by one they began to come and make a friendship with David until finally the Bible uses the word huge. And it doesn't use adjectives like we use them today until finally there was a huge host of them that had come to be on his side. But he was tentative about the business of these guys that came up to him and said, we're here today. We're ready to make an alliance with you. We're ready to establish a friendship with you. Amen. And David was wondering in his mind, are they really just going to betray me to mine enemies? Are they going to be the cause of my doom? Are they going to be the cause of my failure? Amen. Our world today knows a lot about what's called Facebook friends. Amen. Those are real enemies to true apostolics. And when I read the statistics recently, I felt so sorry for the one God preachers that didn't have the guts to take a stand against Facebook. When I read that the younger generation wants to abandon Facebook completely to the old folks, and the roles have switched, and it's over 40% now of the younger generation doing all their social media on Snapchat. Boy, it got quiet. I told you I had a big job to do here today. Now, how do you explain to the people that one was okay, but now I've got to finally stand up because they're not doing that anymore. They want to write with erasable ink. They want to say things that nobody can track them down and prove it on them. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow. Could we ever talk about that? But it's extremely important that you understand that 
Your heart needs knit together, young people, with true friends. That's the rebels that want to claim to be friends because they know they can betray you to your enemies if you saddle up with them. But within our youth groups, there's this unbelievable notion that the enemy puts there. I kind of adapted an old saying to young people today, and the saying is, to live above with the young people we love, now that will be glory. But to live below with the young people we know, now that's a different story. The enemy wants to put a spirit inside of every youth group that says, I don't want to even try to make friends within my own youth group. I like these friends over here in this church. These friends over here in this other church. And the, I'm just an easy mixer, and I'm sorry. The rest of the young people in my youth group, they don't mix well. Well, listen, I'm not against uh, you making friends outside of your youth group as long as that's not your primary area of friendship. There, there had to be a reason why the Almighty God planted you in the youth group where he planted you There's a God up in heaven uh, that knew there's some other young people uh, in your youth group uh, that need your influence uh, and your love uh, and your care and your concern uh, and your encouragement uh, to help them along the way. Amen. Amen. Oh, I appreciate it so much. Looking over here last night, Brother Jones. Amen. And seeing those young ladies from your church all gathered around one another and praying for one another. They didn't learn that by accident. Amen. But something stuck in their heart when a pastor and a pastor's wife said you were born into this youth group. Uh, don't go parading around when you go to a conference uh, to see how cosmopolitan you can be uh, with everybody else uh, and leave your own young people struggling uh, with problems in their life, uh, circumstances in their life, uh, and they can't even have the help of you praying with them, uh, of you loving them, uh, of you being there for them, uh, of you you caring for them. Oh, yes. David said, if you are fake friends, I'm going to let God rebuke you. But he said, if I don't care if I've known you for one day, or all of my life, if you really come to offer true friendship, then you're not going to betray me to my enemies. You're not going to feed the rebellion that's an enemy of my soul that wants to destroy me. You're going to be an uplift and you're going to be a strength and you're going to be an encouragement to me. Uh, he said, I'm going to let my soul uh, 
get knit together with your soul. It doesn't matter if we're blood related or not. I'm going to get closer to you than I will any other young people because you're going the right way. You're fighting the same enemy I'm fighting. You're trying to be an overcomer and I want to team up with you. I want to fight with you. I want to be there with you in the battlefield. Hallelujah. 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 I'll just say to you, amen. You need to find some new friends and get rid of the pretenders. If you know they listen to the wrong kind of music, cut them out of your heart. You know they gossip about the pastor's family, uh, cut them out. They're betraying you to your enemies. Get knit together true friends. Number two, number two, hearts knit together in conquering competitiveness. Jonathan was meeting David for the very first time. And the way the carnal mind thinks the competition showed up. I mean, this was the guy according to the scripture, was holding Goliath's head in his hand. I mean, all of Israel had busted out in dances, screaming his praises, talking about what a wonderful, wonderful young man. He was, in Spanish we say, el mero mero. He was it, brother. And every beautiful maiden in Israel hung on to hopes that if I dump this dream about getting Jonathan, could I have a shot at David? Wow. Here's Jonathan watching. Amen. As his dad is talking to this new young hero, the one that took your place on the drums on the platform. One that took your place singing lead in the choir. Woo! Hallelujah. Man. How long do I got to drill here today? And here he comes. And Jonathan's listening to him. He could have easily given in to jealousy, to envy, to strife, to what the Bible calls emulation. You need to go study that out if you're going to be an overcoming apostolic young person to where you can purge your heart of the desire to equal or exceed anybody else. Make your mind up. I'm not in competition with anybody but the person I can be for God. If I'll sell out with all I've got. Oh, yeah. He'll get my girl. She'll get that guy I've been pining for ever since I've been in the church. I've been secretly, you know, nobody knows it, but I've been carrying the torch for him. Hey, simple gift of suspicion. You don't need any discernment most of the time. 
You just watch them eyes light up when he comes around. And like, woo! Hope he didn't notice that spark or it's all over. Amen. But Jonathan's attitude immediately, the Bible said his heart was knit together. That young man standing there talking to his dad. You're not my rival. You're not my rival. This guy has done something for God that I've always wished I could do. David, I want what you got. I don't know how else to say it, but there's something more important than my position as a prince in this kingdom. It's that anointing of God that's on you. And I want it. I want it so bad. I'm not going to compete with you. I'm not. that to get God mad at me. I'm going to love you. My heart's going to be knit together with your heart. Hallelujah. I'll never gossip about you, David. Let's work together. Let's work together. Hearts get knit together to conquer competitiveness. Competitiveness. But the third area that I give to you here today is young people need their hearts knit together in hatred for lewdness. I read it to you. Judges chapter number 20. It's quite a story if you'll take the time to read it. It's a wayfaring man on his way to God's house. Evening shadows are lengthening. And he sees as he's traveling with his concubine the lights of a city close by. The suggestion is made maybe we should stop and spend the night there at Jebus. He said, oh no, oh no. The Jebusites live there. The heathen live there. Things bad could happen if we spend just one night in the vicinity of the heathen. Bad things can go wrong. So let's push on a little farther and pick up the pace. I know where God's people are living. I know where they have a little town over here called Gibeah, and that's where the Benjamites live. And he said, I, I, I know we'll be safe there. No, everything will be fine if we make it up in our mind we're going to spend the night and stay close by under the protection of the people of God. But when he got to Gibeah, he found out what many people are slow to learning, and that is that there are some sons of Belial living safely among God's people. Belial means without yoke. That's the Hebrew definition of it. They're the guys that won't let the pastor put a yoke on them, won't become accountable to the man of God. They're the girls that don't want to get close to the pastor's wife. They don't want a yoke put on them at all. Living among God's people are those, amen, that are like there are in every youth group. There are closet rebels that need to be outed to their pastor.
was hoping the witness would be a little stronger than that. This generation needs a fresh revelation. Deuteronomy 5 and 1 that teaches if you see something, if you hear something, and you don't say something, the blood of that person is on your hands. If you know, if you know, it wasn't hearsay, you saw it, you heard it yourself, and you are going to provide safe haven for a son of Belial to live among God's people. Remember, there's a fiery judgment that came upon that city of Gibeah. Because of what they did. There he finds an old man. He said, nobody will let us have room in their house. He said, please don't sleep in the street. Please come to my house. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll feed your animal. I'll take care of everything. It's going to be great if you, if you will just, just, just come with me. I'll protect you. There he endeavored to offer protection. But a terrible thing happened that night. Is that the men of Belial were so inflamed in their sexual desires till the men of Belial that were living, protected by God's people who would not cast them out, who would not stand with hearts knit together in a hatred for lewdness, had to discover that when they got all done with their recreational sex, they left a dead woman the doorstep of the house that's there. In the morning, when the man woke up, he did the unthinkable, but he had a hatred for the lewdness and the folly that they did. He took his concubine, chopped up her dead body into 12 pieces, distributed them to all of Israel. He said, I want you to take a good look at this, Israel. I want you to take a good look at what's happening among the people of God. Because nobody will out the closet rebels that are into lewdness. I want you to take a good look at it and see. Bible definition for lewdness and folly is shockingly obscene. Abomination to plot premeditated sexual acts. Disregard of moral and religious claims. It's the perfect definition recreational sex that this generation this generation this generation is plagued with lewdness oh you don't have to worry about me pastor I'd, I'd never be involved in a gang rape no but pornography is the perfect description of lewdness.
or you can have sex with as many people as you want to and never have to worry about the Me Too movement catching you. Because nobody else sees what you're doing. Nobody else knows what you're doing. Nobody else. The world's definition of lewdness is nowadays only when it involves a child. But God's definition of lewdness is all sexual activity outside of marriage. As the musicians come today, I want to tell you a story in closing. I thought of it last night. I heard the story about the Mennonite men wanting to know about baptism. Young man came to our assembly, and I met with him because I'd heard his story of the past. He told me they were a Mennonite family. And so the conservative aspects of coming to an apostolic church somewhere in Texas where he was at was never a problem for them. He said sleeves weren't sleeves weren't below the elbow. They were all the way to the wrist. He said for us there was absolutely no problems with holiness with any of those issues. I said, well, tell me, tell me how, how did you end up living in West Hollywood in a gay relationship for 10 years? How did that happen to you? How can you describe that? Were you molested as a child? No. Any uncle, anybody ever take? No. No. He said, I was 19 years of age. Had all of the normal desires. Anybody else would have. He said, but I started watching pornography. He said, I didn't start with looking same-sex stuff. It was the other stuff, but you look at the other stuff long enough, they'll introduce you to group. You'll watch other females having sex with each other. I must have had this shocked look on my face when he said, Pastor, Pastor, don't you know? That's what all of us millennials do. I said, pardon me? He said, our parents don't know. Our pastor doesn't know. Nobody knows. It's our own little secret that we watch pornography. I said, I want to tell you something if you want to overcome. You want to live for God. You want to come to this church. Not only are you going to have to forsake every form of perversion and homosexuality, you're going to have to get that pornography completely out of your life. Wouldn't it be a shame if the Mennonites came to us to find the truth about Jesus' name, baptism, but only found the same lewdness of pornography. 
It was right where they came from. Scripture said the men of Israel knit their hearts together as one man. He said, we're getting this lewdness out from among us. We don't care what it takes. We don't care who goes down in the process. We want the favor of the Almighty God to be upon us. We've got to purge Israel in hearts knit together in a hatred toward lewdness. 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 I know we got another service coming. Another preacher coming. But I'm asking just the young people to stand if you would. I don't want you to come and kneel at this altar. Because we're going to need every space that we possibly can. But I'm going to ask you to find the other young people of your youth group. And spend a few minutes here knitting your hearts together to hate lewdness and purge it from among God's people, purge it, purge it from among God's people. Young ladies, find the young ladies from your youth group. Young men, find the young men from your youth group. Oh, God, we're going to make true friends. We're not going to compete with one another. We're going to knit our hearts together in hatred for recreational sex. The lewdness that will bring the wrath of God upon us. That's it. That's it. Brother, sister. Uh, we're living in a heathen society. We're living in a polluted world. We're not going to let the sons of Belial. We're not going to let the sons of Belial hide among us. Oh. Together, Lord, That's it. That's it. Together, oh, God. Lord, that Give me a hatred for lewdness. Lord, Give me a hatred. A hatred for it. Together, oh, God. brother together I'll help you sister I'll help you I'll help you get victory but we ain't hiding nothing together I'll help you get victory I promise I'll pray with you I'll fast for you we're getting victory